In this video, I'll cover six important signs and vision changes that if you notice them, you should see an eye doctor right away because certain changes in your vision can be signals of dangerous medical problems like strokes, cranial nerve problems, tumors, renal tears, or detachments, and should be treated as soon as possible. By the way, I'm Dr. Michael Chua. I'm a board certified ophthalmologist with Pointe Hills Eye Care, and I make videos to help you see better, look better, and feel better too. The first sign that you don't wanna ignore is sudden vision loss or blocking out of vision in one of your eyes, or maybe you'll notice a shade over your vision in one eye. If you have temporary sudden vision loss that lasts from seconds to minutes and resolves spontaneously in one of your eyes, that's a condition we call amaurosis fugax. Amaurosis means darkening in Greek, and fugax means fleeting in Latin. So amaurosis fugax literally means fleeting or transient darkening of vision. When we eye doctors hear a patient mention this symptom to us, alarm bells are ringing in our head because that could be a presenting sign of little emboli blocking off circulation in the central retinal artery. This decreased blood supply causes damage to the retina and can cause vision loss. So if a patient presents with a story or symptoms of amaurosis fugax, we doctors need to work quickly to identify what's causing these disruptions in blood flow. We can use ultrasound to scan through the carotid arteries in the neck or the coronary arteries in the heart to see if we can identify any plaques in the blood vessels. Basically, over time, things like fat, cholesterol, and waste products can stick to the sides of our blood vessels, impeding smooth blood flow. Sometimes, a small clump of the plaque or a little blood clot can break off and travel through our blood vessels. This is called an embolus. Unfortunately, these little clumps or emboli can get stuck in smaller blood vessels, blocking flow to important parts of our body like our heart, our brain, our lungs, or our eyes. And so if a patient comes to see us with amaurosis fugax or episodes of sudden vision loss, it's a medical emergency and we need to figure out the source of the emboli quickly because that patient is a ticking time bomb. This is because an emboli in the wrong location can cause a catastrophic heart attack or stroke, which can be debilitating or even fatal. Once the location of the plaque is identified, then a patient may receive a procedure like a carotid endarterectomy or a cardiac angioplasty with a stent or basically cleaning out the clogged blood vessels to keep them open. We actually had this exact scenario occur in our office last year. A lady came in with episodes of temporary loss of vision in one eye. My wife, who's also an eye doctor, saw her and recognized the severity of the situation right away. The patient received ultrasound imaging quickly and it turned out that she had a heart condition which was treated by a cardiologist right away. A few weeks later, the patient's daughter sent a note to our office thanking my wife for saving her mom's life. And she's right. A simple eye exam with prompt medical treatment likely prevented her mom from suffering a catastrophic heart attack or stroke. Okay, the next visual sign you don't want to ignore is blocking out of vision in both eyes on one side. When a person can't see from half of the field of vision from both eyes, we call this condition homonymous hemianopsia. The word homonymous means that the same side of vision is missing in each eye. And the word hemianopsia stems from hemi, which means half. So half of the visual field is missing. And looking at the rest of the word, and opsia, and means without, and opsia is the Greek word for sight. So hemi and opsia means half of the visual field without sight. So for example, if someone has a right homonymous hemi and opsia, that means that they can't see the right half of the world in either their left or right eye. When we eye doctors hear from a patient this complaint of one side of their visual world being blurry or cut out, then we worry about a brain or a neurological problem. You see, the visual cortex, which is the part of our brain responsible for processing the visual information received from our eyes, is located in the back part of the brain called the occipital lobe. The occipital lobe is split up into two halves, the left half and the right half. Each half is responsible for the visual information from the opposite side of the visual field. So our left occipital lobe is responsible for the right half of our visual world, and the right occipital lobe is responsible for the left half of our visual world. So if a patient tells me that they notice they are having trouble seeing the left half of their visual field, then I worry about some sort of damage to the right occipital lobe in the brain. Some of the more common causes of homonymous hemianopsia include a stroke, a brain tumor, or multiple sclerosis. These are all serious neurological conditions that require prompt treatment, so these are diagnoses that we do not want to miss. Okay, the next important visual sign is diplopia or double vision. Now, the first key piece of information we eye doctors need to figure out when a patient comes to us complaining of double vision is whether it's monocular, meaning you still see double vision in one eye when the other eye is closed, or binocular, meaning that it's being caused from the misalignment of the two eyes, so when either eye is closed, it goes away. Now, if double vision is monocular, meaning that it's coming from one eye, then it usually is an eye-related issue that we can address. Common causes of seeing double vision from one eye include astigmatism, dry eye, cataracts, or corneal abnormalities. But if the double vision is binocular, then it's more likely that there's a problem with eye alignment. 
or it could be a problem in the nerves that control eye movements, which we call the cranial nerves. You see, most of the nerves in our body originate from our spinal cord, but there's a special set of 12 nerves that come directly from the brain and they have specific functions related to sensations like vision or smell or movement, like moving the muscles in our face for facial expression or also moving our eyeballs. These are the cranial nerves. Three of the cranial nerves, cranial nerve three or the ocular motor nerve, cranial nerve four or the trochlear nerve, or cranial nerve six, which is the adducens nerve, these three cranial nerves are responsible for controlling the muscles right outside of our eyeballs or the extraocular muscles. So these are the nerves that allow us to move our eyes as we look at the world around us. If one of these nerves gets injured, then our eyes may become misaligned and our eye movements may become weak. So if a patient comes to see me with complaints of new binocular double vision, I need to consider the possibility that there might be something going on in their brain that's causing damage to one or several of the cranial nerves. One of the most common causes for a cranial nerve injury is what's called microvascular ischemia. So a microvascular ischemic cranial nerve palsy is a condition where one of those cranial nerves that we talked about, the ones that control your eye movements, temporarily lose their function due to lack of blood supply. It's typically seen in older adults with vascular risk factors like diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, or smoking. When one of those cranial nerves gets injured from poor blood supply, then one of your eyes won't be moving properly. When the affected eye can't move in sync with the other healthy eye, then you would notice double vision. Fortunately, these small vascular ischemic events usually don't cause permanent damage like a stroke could. So we generally monitor this condition for three to six months for improvement. But if you suffer from this condition, it likely means that you have uncontrolled risk factors like diabetes, high blood pressure, or cholesterol that are seriously affecting the blood circulation in your body. And it serves as a wake-up call for patients to be more aggressive in treating these underlying conditions. Now, ischemia or poor blood supply to the cranial nerves isn't the only possible cause for double vision. Other neurological problems like brain tumors, aneurysms, strokes, or multiple sclerosis can cause damage to the cranial nerves. So many times, we would need to get a brain MRI to make sure you don't have any other dangerous or possibly life-threatening conditions causing the new double vision. There are other conditions that can cause double vision, like thyroid eye disease, which is an autoimmune eye condition associated with thyroid problems, and it usually involves inflammation and swelling of the eye muscles, which can lead to symptoms like bulging eyes, double vision, and eyelid retraction. Another possibility is that for whatever reason, with time, we may lose the ability to maintain the alignment and coordination of our eye muscles. For example, when we focus on near objects, our eyes will turn inward or converge. But when the inward turning of our eyes is weaker than normal, then we can start to see double vision. And that's a condition we call convergence insufficiency. So as you can see, there are a wide range of possibilities that can cause double vision. And in many cases, it's a diagnostic challenge for us eye doctors to get down to the bottom of it. Okay, so we talked about amaurosis fugax or transient loss of vision. We talked about homonymous hemianopsia or a half visual field cut. And we talked about diplopia or double vision. The next visual change you don't wanna ignore is blurring or loss of your peripheral vision. Before we talk about the next vision change, I wanted to tell you about my optimized newsletter. If you want science-backed tips on how to protect your vision and health delivered straight to your inbox, you can sign up for my optimized newsletter at michaelchuamd.com. Okay, back to peripheral vision changes. The tricky part with peripheral vision problems is that since we're usually focused on what's going on in the center of our vision, peripheral changes to our vision can often go unnoticed for months or even years. If a patient notices that they're having problems with their peripheral vision, one of the first tests I would order is a visual field test. During a visual field test, we set you up on a special computer and we have you look straight ahead at a fixed spot, the fixation target. Then we present several small light spots in different locations in your peripheral vision and you press a button every time you see a light. This way, we have a precisely calibrated way to measure your peripheral vision. Now, one of the most common causes of peripheral vision loss is glaucoma. Glaucoma is often referred to as the silent thief of sight because it can progress without any noticeable symptoms in its early stages. But as time goes on and glaucoma continues to worsen, it can cause loss of peripheral vision and irreversible vision loss or blindness if it's not diagnosed or treated promptly. On a pretty frequent basis, I meet patients who haven't seen an eye doctor in many years or maybe even ever, and they mention that they're noticing that their side vision is a little blurry. And sure enough, we complete the visual field testing and it turns out that they already have moderate to severe glaucoma and now we're basically scrambling to try to manage their glaucoma and prevent it from getting worse. But unfortunately, the damage that was already done is irreversible. Another possibility with peripheral vision changes that we see with patients is that when they complete their visual field testing, I see that the outer half, or basically the side of our temples, 
that half of the field of vision is blurred or blacked out. This is what we call a bitemporal hemianopsia. So basically, bi means two or involving both of our eyes, and temporal refers to our temporal bones on the outside of our skull. So a bitemporal hemianopsia is a field cut in the outer half of our vision in both of our eyes. When I see a bitemporal field cut on visual field testing, then I worry about something going on in the brain. If we follow the optic nerves from our eyes all the way to the visual cortex in the back of the brain, we see that they cross here in the optic chiasm. If there's a tumor here, it can commonly be a pituitary tumor and it's pushing on the optic chiasm, then this can cause a bitemporal field cut. And so I've personally seen multiple cases of patients who come in saying their peripheral vision is blurred out. They say they've been to eyeglasses stores, they've tried different prescriptions, but the vision was still blurry. Then we perform a visual test and lo and behold, we have a bitemporal field cut. Then they go on to get a brain MRI and then we find a brain tumor sitting right on the optic chiasm and then they go on to receive neurosurgery. Okay, one other possibility I need to keep in mind when patients mention peripheral blurry vision are retinal detachments. Now, a common symptom patients mention with retinal detachments is that they can notice a curtain or shadow coming down and covering their field of vision. It can occur from any direction, the top, bottom, or sides, and it can progress towards central vision loss if it's not treated quickly. It can also be associated with flashes of light or a rain of floaters that can look like blobs, flies, or cobwebs. Retinal detachments are eye emergencies and should be treated as soon as possible to prevent permanent vision loss. So if you notice any of these changes, get checked out with your local eye doctor quickly. Okay, the last vision symptom you don't want to ignore is probably the most obvious, but it's blurry vision. Now, the tricky thing with blurry vision is that so many things can cause it. It may be that you need an updated glasses prescription, or if there's something going on in the eye, then I sometimes like to think about the whole structure of the eye and how any component of it can be causing the vision problems. For example, going from front to back, it can be the cornea or the front surface of the eye that's causing the problem. The cornea should be clear and transparent, but if there's problems like dry eye, corneal infections, corneal scars, inflammation or swelling, this can cause blurry vision. Working our way back, we have the lens. So if there's a cataract causing the lens to become cloudy, that'll cause blurry vision. And further back into the vitreous or the jelly inside the eye, if there are floaters or clumps inside the vitreous, or if there's bleeding in the vitreous, then we'll see some blurring or blacking out of our vision. And then there's the retina. That's the light sensitive tissue in the back of the eye, which converts light into electrical signals that are sent to the optic nerve and into the brain so we can see. If we have retinal problems, things like macular degeneration, retinal bleeding or swelling from diabetes, retinal scarring or retinal detachments, then that's gonna affect our vision too. Lastly, we have the optic nerve. If we have damage to our optic nerve, that can affect our vision too. Conditions like glaucoma, optic nerve ischemia, optic nerve inflammation, these all can cause our vision to be poor. So basically, I guess I just summarize what I do all day. Patients come to see me with vision complaints and my job is to get down to the bottom of it, diagnose the problem so we can figure out how we can fix their problems. And I love every second of it. I hope you find this information helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for future updates. And if you live in Los Angeles, Orange County, or Inland Empire area, and want to get your eyes checked out, feel free to visit our website or give our phone number a call today. I'm Dr. Michael Chua with Puente Hills Eye Care. See you next time.